thanks. And thank you for fixing the mic. I managed to wreck it. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me. What I'm going to give you is a bit of an overview in terms of what Welcome um, as a charitable foundation does and how we work in partnership. Those of you who don't know Welcome, we're a global foundation. We are very fortunate to have uh, money in an endowment and through investments, which mean that we are politically and financially independent as an organisation. And last year, last financial year, we spent around £1.1 billion pounds on improving health. And £700 million of that was in science and science investments. We, we only live down the road, actually, on, on Euston Road. And we do a lot of work in public engagement. We've got some theme priority areas. But we are a significant funder of biomedical research. 43% um, of our portfolio in science is in personal awards, so that means it's fellowships, it's investigator awards, it's for people. So people are incredibly important to us um, as an organisation. But picking up on some of the stats that um, were, were just sort of talked about, when you look at our intermediate career level, we've got a ratio um, of about 50-50 actually, it's about 48%, 52%. Um, female, male. When you get to the next level in the career, that drops right down to 30-70. So the senior investigator level, the um, investigator award level, we are, we are tipped. So these are just important things to bear in mind. So what I'm going to do here is just sort of let you know a little bit about uh, diversity and inclusion at Welcome. We, as I say, we fund science, we fund research, we fund public engagement. But a couple of years ago, we put together a team with a specific priority focus on diversity and inclusion. So very importantly, actually, you know, diversity and inclusion is much more than just an altruistic gesture. It's absolutely fundamental to Welcome's mission. And so what we're doing is we're investing for certainly the next five and, and plus more years in a priority area which will allow us to experiment, to do things that are um, a little bit different because we've got some flexibility and freedom um, to do that. And we are really keen to make sure that what we do is we use our influence and our opportunities to act sort of as agilely as possible um, to speed up progress. And we are part of a system. We are not the solution by any stretch of the imagination. And we can't do any of this. These are systemic issues unless and until we work in effective partnership. So the discussion this evening is really helpful. I think the discussion that we've just had about the lead-in from education into undergraduate into PhD is a phenomenally important part of the system to look at um, as well. So what do we think diversity is at Welcome? Well, it's very broad, and we are taking the broadest view possible in terms of thinking about this. Neural diversity, disciplinary diversity, background diversity, and of course, all the protected characteristics. And it's very much more than, um, as everybody has talked about this evening, just women in science, although women in science are clearly fundamentally important to the whole enterprise. And I think one thing we have to recognize is that we're not, we can't be in this for the short game. This is definitely a long-term issue. And actually, it's about some of the fundamental cultures. It's about, we've talked about reward and recognition, clear promotion criteria, clear um, accessibility of looking at backgrounds in a very sympathetic way that gives people an opportunity to um, display their experience and their vision for the work that they want to do. So our approach is really to look for sustainable change, not just a quick fix, which might be a single knee-jerk response um, that might grab a headline. Really what we're trying to do is look at the systemic problem. So we have a number of work streams, and my colleague Gemma Tracy, who leads the research side of things, would have loved to have been here tonight but couldn't. She re leads the UK science and research side. We've got a side looking at society, and we've got a very important part of the equation actually looking at welcome itself. It's all very well us talking about how diverse and inclusive the rest of the groups need to be. If we're not looking at ourselves and addressing those issues internally, we aren't going to make progress sufficiently. So what have we done so far? Um, to date, really what we've been looking at is trying to publish, commission, find out what the background um, information is. We've established a steering group which will help advise us information on, on the website. And we've funded a number of different networks and groups that can help us sort of populate our knowledge base in relation to what's actually going on. Many of you will have come across the Brilliant Club before. These are um, a super group of individuals, actually, who were te school teachers to begin with. And they're engaging both with um, schools who are trying to raise the profile 
of selective universities for their, for their students going through, as well as actually working very carefully with PhD students to teach and train them how to engage um, effectively in the whole process. We've launched the Research Enrichment Scheme, and that's really for people who've got welcome money and that may not solve the problem, of course, but it's to allow them to experiment with trying new different things, whether it's relating to diversity and inclusion or thinking about public engagement, um, et cetera. And one thing I'm leading on at the moment is this question about how to improve culture um, in terms of PhD training and how to increase and improve the diversity and inclusion coming into PhD training, make sure we don't break people through the process and keep them inspired and confident to continue. And there we need to look very closely with the sort of whole widening participation group of individuals at universities as well as the school sector um, too. We've recently um, updated a policy on disabled applicants. That's really to provide people who are disabled with extra support if they need it. Again, I think, um, as, as you showed the iceberg, we've got an iceberg here. You know, this is a little policy. We hear all too often, actually, in a university setting that there is one lab that might be in the basement somewhere, um, which isn't in the, in the same place as the rest of the students might be getting trained. And so there are some really big issues, I think, in relation to how we uh, manage, support, and encourage disabled applicants to come through for PhD training and for grant, grant funding. The enrichment scheme I mentioned, um, this is an additional way. We're also supporting work which we're loosely rephrasing as research on research. So this is, do we know, have we got any evidence to show whether or not any of our new approaches are working? And so we're looking to try and build a level of experimentation into the way in which we're working as, as an organization. And this is the... Um, report which will be published in the next couple of weeks and all the data will be out on Figshare, which is really setting the challenge out to institutions and it's saying of course we want absolutely superb science, we want PhD programs that are absolutely going to be tackling very relevant problems and equipping people with skills to go on and do research in whatever setting. But very importantly, we are setting the challenge to the institutions to say, what are you going to do to help us tackle some of these hard ingrained issues, which we hear time and time again exist in relation to the culture of scientific research, research more generally. So we have made money available. We are just in the process at the moment of doing a, a whole range of roadshows. They're on the website, so if anybody wants to come and join, we'd be delighted to hear from you. In terms of what, what's next for um, DNI at Wellcome, um, we're going to do some more work on the disabled grant holder side of things, and so feedback that you've got in this room or subsequently, we'd be delighted to hear from you. We're going to make sure that all our staff actually at Wellcome, starting with those that are working very closely with all our review panels, are trained in um, unconscious bias awareness. We think that's incredibly important. You know, that's one of the key places where, where some of these issues arise. We're trialing different approaches to blinding, to doing different types of review. Um, and we're looking at putting into our grants terms and conditions diverse and inclusive um, statements and expectations. And what we will do is also be launching um, a DNI research program. And you'll be hearing more on that uh, fairly shortly. One of the things that we started about 18 months ago now is something called EDIS, and this is Equality and Diversity in Science. And it was initially a partnership. It was Patrick Valance, it was Jim Smith, so it was the CRIC, and it was GSK at the time. And of course now Patrick Valance is Chief Science Advisor um, to the government, so he's also got a critical role in relation to that. But to really um, enable people to have a higher profile about what the academic and the industrial research communities were doing, to make it clear that there should be equal opportunities for all when we're thinking about accessing successful careers. And EDIS is fairly uh, young in its gestation at the moment. Lily Hunt, whose email is up there, is leading that for us. So by all means, please get in touch with Lily if there are um, further issues you'd like to discuss on, the, on that particular issue. Um, this is Gemma and this is me. Those are our email addresses. And we're delighted to hear from you. We are, we're here really to make sure that Welcome can catalyze change using the flexibility and the freedom that it's got. So as, a, as an effective partner, we need to listen. And that's what we're here to do this evening. Thank you.